Today we're going to take a look at the Cinderella Once Upon a Midnight plug and play from Jax Pacific that was released in 2007. And here we have the controller. This is one of the more extravagant ones that I've seen. When I first actually saw this at the thrift store, I thought it was a music box, but the joystick on this is really, really good. It's an eight-way joystick. Some of these plug and plays, they try to cheap out and give you one that's only four-way, even if you only use four directions instead of the eight. This is a full eight-way joystick. It feels great. It controls really nicely. The buttons on here work well. Here's the base. There's a lot of detail here, and I would not be surprised if a lot of time had gone into this. There's the castle. To the left of that is the fairy godmother. Then you have the mice on both sides, the logo, and the on and off switch. And the power light and the start button are both put together, which is nice here. And again, like I said, this thing might look completely ridiculous, but it controls well. It's a nice piece of hardware. It's a great joystick. The cord here is just over six feet long, but like most of the Jack Pacific stuff, it's just mono uh, output. And even though it does exist, you're almost never going to see a stereo output on these. And then, of course, like all the other ones we normally see, it's going to take four double A's to power these. You're pretty much never going to get away from that. But overall, I have to say, someone put a lot of time into this and it looks great. Good for them. It might be completely ridiculous and over the top, especially for what it is. But yeah, it looks great and controls great and does the job. Cinderella Once Upon a Midnight consists of four games, all of which begin with a tutorial and have a single high score save slot. They're all quite different from each other and focus on various side characters from the movie. Gus's corn craze has Cinderella's two mice friends, Jacques and Gus, gathering corn. You control Jacques and must throw corn kernels down to Gus, who carries them away off screen. You can move left or right with the joystick, use the action button to enter a mouse hole or drop corn off the ledge and pick up a coin by walking through it. Once Gus collects a set amount of corn, you move on to the next level. Every coin is worth 5 points. The point value of each piece of corn depends on how quickly you throw it off the ledge. If you grab it as soon as it appears, you will receive 10 points. The value decreases the longer it takes to get to it. Each mouse hole entrance and exit are paired together by a common color and shape. When you stand in front of the mouse hole entrance, the exit will blink to show you exactly where you will end up. Familiarizing yourself with the entrances and exits will make it much easier for you to navigate the level and get the high score by getting to the corn as quickly as possible. As the levels progress, Gus is required to pick up an extra piece of corn. Level 1 requires 4 pieces, level 2 requires 5 pieces, and level 3 requires 6 pieces. Lucifer the Cat even makes an appearance. Although you can interact with him, he is not able to affect the gameplay. Gus's corn craze does have a few positives. The idea of the game is solid, the animations of all three characters look great, and because the joystick moves so well, the game has decent controls. It's like an old arcade game that can get more and more difficult and add new ideas as the levels progress, but unfortunately it doesn't. Even though the foundation of the game is fine, there are only three levels, and before you know it, it's over, before it ever gets going. Dance Cinderella Dance is a button matching game that kind of feels like you're executing someone's fatality finishing move in Mortal Kombat. You are given a set of commands to input, either left, right, up, down, or the action button, and once it is done correctly, one of the dance positions will be carried out. Forward promenade, waltz spin, outside turn, or reverse promenade. You can continue trying to input the pattern until you get it correct. If you get it right on the first try, you'll receive 10 points, second try you'll receive 6 points, third try 4 points, fourth try 2 points, and 1 point for any completed attempt after that. As the levels progress, an extra dance is required to complete them, for a total of 12 dances across 3 levels. The game uses a static background, but the animations when dancing are what really stick out. Prince Charming is animated just fine, but Cinderella's dress flow looks excellent, and I'll fight anyone who says otherwise. It's easily the best animation out of all the games. Just like Gus's Corn Craze, the control, animations, and ideas are solid, but again there's only 3 levels, which means it's over without any challenge at all. Carriage Countdown is the entry that is most like an actual console video game. You are in control of the carriage that must get Cinderella home before midnight. Forward speeds up, back slows down, and up and down move you up and down. You travel through four areas trying to get Cinderella home on time. Castle, town, forest, and home before the fairy godmother's magical spell ends. Try to get back as soon as possible while collecting as many coins as you can. Silver coins give you one point and gold coins give you five points. Wands can also be picked up and used for a speed boost by pressing the action button. 
Hitting gravel or water will slow the carriage down, but if you are in the middle of a speed boost, there won't be any detrimental effects to the carriage's speed. One of the biggest issues with carriage countdown is the sheer size of the vehicle. The game revolves around avoiding hazards and trying to get as many coins as possible, but the carriage is large and not very easy to maneuver. It reminds me of the comically large spaceship from Ren and Stimpy Buckaroos rather than a properly sized vehicle from a good shoot 'em up like Gradius. I like this game, and the music is constantly pumping combined with the church bell ringing to make you feel like you really need to get home fast. Like the previous games, the controls are on point and the animations look great. The wheels actually spin on the carriage, the horses are galloping, and the coachmen have their hair blowing in the wind. Unfortunately, this is the shortest game in the entire collection and only consists of one continuous run through the areas. Memory Magic is the most basic game of the bunch as it's just a very rudimentary version of the game Memory. There are three levels of puzzles in the game, 16 tiles in each with a set background specific to each board. Level 1 has the King's Castle, 2 has the Fairy Godmother, and 3 has the Glass Slipper. You start with four different face cards in level 1, a Bluebird, a Wand, a Pumpkin, and Major the Horse. Level 2 adds Jacques the Mouse, and level 3 adds a Glass Slipper, a Carriage, and Bruno the Dog. The animation of the cards flipping and the assortment of faces for the cards are done perfectly fine. This one only needed a little bit of work to make it go a lot further. 1. Starting with less than 16 tiles and continuously adding as the levels progress. 2. Showing the placement of all the cards quickly and then giving you a set number of attempts to solve the board. 3. Having a few dozen backgrounds that are randomly selected for each level. 4. Having more than 3 levels. Just like all the games before, Memory Magic is great in the animation department but just doesn't have enough substance. The options menu gives you the choice to turn the sound off, watch the credits, and view or reset the high scores. You can make the argument that you would buy this for someone that really loves Cinderella, but you never actually get to play as her in any of the games. I do like the idea of putting you in control of the different side characters in the world though, it's nice to have focus on someone other than Cinderella. If you really must have a game with a female Disney protagonist, there are great older games like Pocahontas on the Sega Genesis as well as good newish games like Brave on the PlayStation 3 or Xbox 360. Even though they require a separate console being purchased to play, they will put you in front of more challenging gameplay and keep you entertained much longer. And even though you don't control a female protagonist, I can't push the Wreck-It Ralph arcade game enough. So do I recommend Cinderella Once Upon a Midnight? No I don't. The design and functionality of the controller is excellent and probably one of the best in the Jack's Pacific line, but sadly the four games do not have the same follow through. I just don't think that there's enough here to keep anyone on earth entertained for more than 30 minutes max. It has fine ideas, good music, and great animations, however as a whole it just doesn't give you anywhere to grow. Take a look at Pac-Man, it's a very simple concept that not many people have actually beaten. The game leaves room for learning and improvement and will always have you coming back for more. It takes more than three levels to get many arcade games firing on all cylinders, and unfortunately that's exactly where these games end. Getting your nerd on, getting your nerd on, getting your nerd on. I got a raging nerd on.